by the Medical Center of Southwest Louisiana and Women's and Children's Hospital. Good morning and welcome to Chomp Time. My name is Andy Davis. To my right, the head coach of the Ice Skaters, Don Murak. And uh, coach, welcome back to the show. Another week of hockey and uh, coming into the weekend, 6-0 and in the Ice Skaters' last six games. A great streak for Louisiana. Talk about that streak a little bit. It's just been uh, so good to see the team playing so well right now. Yeah, like, you know, I said all along that, you know, if we all believe in each other and work for each other as a hockey team with the talent we got and the young kids that we got, uh, you know, and the good goaltending we're getting now, that uh, we can compete with any team in the league. And that's what the guys are doing. We're getting second efforts for guys and uh, it's a lot nicer to be here at 6-0 I'll tell you that. Let's uh, talk about something other than hockey right now the uh, Ice Skaters media and sponsor golf tournament this past Monday at Le Triomphe. It was a great time. Uh, I know uh, you were out there the whole team was out there. How'd you shoot this past week? Uh, we did pretty good. Let's say we had a lot of fun. I mean I got a team was about six seven under but uh, I think Chris Valasevic's team won but it was a great beautiful day and the players had fun and I think the sponsors media had a great time too. It was a lot of it was a real good time. Well that uh, tournament of course came after the team played three games in three nights. It's always nice to kind of get away from the rink and get out there and, and play some golf and have some fun, and that's the way it was on Monday. Yeah, like, and that, that's like a nice bonus for the guys. I mean, you know, it's always to have a nice day off, but to have a day off when you got six wins uh, under your belt and you got a streak going, it just makes it a lot more a lot more fun. I know the guys would rather go out there and enjoy themselves. It's tough to enjoy yourself. So it been, the tables would have been turned, but uh, right now things are going in our card right now, and we're just going to keep plugging away. Well, one of the guys that uh, did not win the tournament finished in third place, Jay Murphy. He's our spotlight player this week, and uh, Jay was very upset he didn't win the tournament. You know, he's very competitive. He's the same way on the ice. And he, yeah. he picked up the ECHL Player of the Week this week. And talk about Jay's play over the past couple of games. Wow, you want to talk about heart and character. I mean, this guy comes to play every game. He works hard in practice. He's just a, he's just a competitor. And Jay Murphy, you know, he's a, he's a guy who gets in there and digs in the corners and, and, and works hard and just drives to the head. He gives you everything he can. And I can't be happier for a guy to win the Player of the Week honors than Jay Murphy. And talking about Jay Murphy, you have him on a line right now, Coach, with John DePore. Jason Sessa, the line that's playing uh, at the top of their game and probably one of the best lines in the league right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Johnny DePork brings a lot of good hockey skills. He works hard, gives openings to Murph, and, you know, with Sessa there, you know, they even get himself open if he keeps working hard, chip in a couple goals here and there. But uh, it's nice to have two lines out there that can score. And, uh, you know, John Spoltar, of course, everybody in the league knows Spotty, and they're going to be after him, and, uh, and they're going to be checking him close. So what it does, it opens up openings for other lines because they're going to put their check line against Spoltar, and then now if the other lines come through, then it means that now when you come to Louisiana, you got to watch out for two teams, and uh, it's just nice to have that line going. Well, let's take a look at this week's player spotlight, Jay Murphy. Jay, this week's player spotlight, congratulations, East Coast Hockey League Player of the Week, and uh, obviously you've been playing very well, both your line mates, Jason Sessa, John DePork. Talk a little bit about playing uh, with both of those guys uh, over the past couple of games. Well, I think, uh, obviously, um, me and Piggy have been working real well together. I think Sess fits in pretty good. He goes into the corners and digs out the puck real well, so I mean, I, and I just hope our line keeps clicking. I think uh, Piggy plays a lot like Louis Dumont, who I played with here for about four years, so I, you know, I'm used to him going to the net hard, and then Piggy does the same thing, so I mean, it's working out well for us right now. You mentioned uh, John DePort going to the net. You love to shoot the puck. You put the puck on net a lot, and a lot of rebounds are often in front. And that's where Jason Sess and John DePort really get a chance to, to score some goals on that line. Yeah, they say my, my best passes come off the goalie's pads, <laughs> so uh, I take a lot of heat for that. But I just, uh, a lot of times I don't see the ice real well, so I just, you know, take a shot on net, and hope, hopefully somebody's going in there for a rebound. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, I guess it's a weakness I have. I mean, I don't, I don't see them going to the net very often, so I just shoot the puck. Every once in a while, I do surprise one of your uh, line mates with a pass. You did uh, in Pensacola a couple of games ago, and John DePork said he wasn't really looking for that pass when you sent it through the crease, and he scored on it, actually. Yeah, one, I got about three good passes in a year, about, so I, I think I used up one there. But, uh, I mean, Piggy, I, I knew he was coming, and we had just had a two-on-one, and I guess uh, I knew he was coming from up high, and he came in exactly where I, where I thought he'd be and just slid it right over to him. He had a wide-open net. 20 games into the season now for the Ice Skaters. Uh, a rocky start, a rough start, of course, with a long road trip, but the team has uh, rattled off six straight wins coming into the weekend. Talk a little bit about the winning streak and, and why things are going so well right now for Louisiana. Well, I think, uh, you know, I mean, obviously our, our goaltending is playing, playing unbelievable right now. I think our, our defense has stepped it out, you know, Val and... and, and uh, uh, Nielsen, I think, uh, Pags, Stano, even Hugo. I mean, everybody's playing real, real good back there. And when they're getting the puck out and letting the forwards do, do some scoring, I think uh, that's that's the key to winning hockey games. And I think uh, we're just getting the puck out and getting it in and doing the simple things right. I think that we have obviously have some work to do because uh, 
we got a lot of games to go, and we're still a young team. But I think that uh, you know, in the next 20 games, you'll see a lot, a lot more changes, a lot, a lot of things that start going our way. Well, a couple of big changes over the past week or so. Uh, Jason McEwitt added to the ice skaters roster of Vashti Nedimansky, acquired in a trade. Of course, you've played with Jason McEwitt before and uh, against Vashti Nedimansky. Talk about the impact of those two players coming to the ice skaters. Well, obviously, Vashi Vashi's a goal scorer, and that's you know what he's here to do. He's got a great shot. I think uh, playing him with Spotty, you're going to see a lot of goals scored. And uh, Jason McEwitt's always been a great player, and he, just, he was kind of a role player when he's, here. he's been here for the last three years. But I think Coach has really given him a, a chance to actually be able to play the game, and he's, he's showing up, and he's doing great. And I think he's playing great with body right now. Jay, talk a little bit about uh, your future plans after hockey. Of course, uh, a lot of years left in you playing-wise, but talk about your plans after the, the playing career is over. I mean, right now I'm just taking it one step at a time. I think I got, uh, hopefully, I got, you know, two or three more years left of me playing hockey. You know, I, I don't want to give up the game I love. And uh, after that, you know, I have my degree. I'm, I'm going to be looking for, uh, you know, obviously I have some opportunities up, up north with, with uh Ford Motor Company and some other companies I've, I've spoken to, but uh, I mean we'll see what happens. And I think uh, obviously I got a, a child on the way, so it'll be a different story. I think at the end of this year, I mean uh, I'll obviously have some choices to make. Wrap it around, he scores! I know all about women's and children's hospital. Once I came to see my grandma after she had surgery. I've been here lots of times. I even stayed overnight when time I had real high fever. But today I'm here to see someone that I don't even know. That's him, my new little brother. When I go up, I want to work here so I can help people. Women's and Children's Hospital, growing with you. In Louisiana, culture matters, diversity matters, community matters, and at Hibernia, service matters, the kind that helps businesses like yours grow and prosper, with smart ideas that can save you time, effort, and money. So why not switch to Louisiana's bank? We understand the things that matter most to you, Hibernia, where service matters here major changes are ahead for America's electric utility industry. Before you know it, outsiders will be stuffing my mailbox with all kinds of offers. But they won't offer what I've got now. A community where all the citizens own the utility. That gives me a voice when it comes to my electric service. If I have a question, I make a local phone call, not a 1-800 call. Outside companies have to answer to stockholders all over the world. My community-owned utility answers to me. The rates are pretty low, too. LUS and you. Good company. The all-new 99 Sierra, the truck for the one percenters, those who want more. A more comfortable interior, a more powerful Vortec V8 engine, a stronger, stiffer, lighter frame. The reviews. 99 Sierra is arguably the new state-of-the-art in the full-size truck business. A deal. Now, get special smart buy or smart lease payments on all new 99 GMC Sierras. See your Cajun Country GMC dealers today. Fill with folks, but you know that. Folks has lowered prices on Kelly and Hallmark tires and custom chrome wheels. We've added more selection to our two boxes and we will continue to keep prices down. Come in and check out the new flex top retractable truck canopy, steel cowl induction hoods and chrome front bumpers. New stainless steel grill guards at the price of chrome. What a deal on stainless steel. Go to folks, go to folks, go to our two locations. Welcome back to Chomp Time. It's now time for our Ask the Gators segment. And Coach, this week we're asking players about their first professional goal. I know yours was a little bit longer than some of these other guys uh, in terms of time-wise, but do you remember your first goal? I'm sure you do, and, and why don't you tell us a little bit about it. Well, I was, uh, I was 19 years old. I was playing for the New York Rangers. Uh, it was the first game of the season, and uh, it was my first shift on the ice. It was a power play. We were playing the Minnesota North Stars. Uh, there was Phil Esposito on the ice with Rod Bear, Ken Hodge, and... Uh, Ross Mazzino told me, he just said, Kitty says, get to the front of the net. He says, I'll get the puck to you. And, and that's what he did. Uh, he won the draw, and he took it in the corner, and he slipped it out to me, and I slapped in the corner, and it was against the Minnesota North Stars. So I think I jumped about six feet in the air. So it was, uh, yeah, you, don't, you never forget your first hockey, your first professional goal. Was that in New York or in Minnesota? It was in Madison Square Garden, full wow. house. So it was quite exciting. And of course, you went on to score a lot of goals that season, including a five-goal game as a rookie. I mean, that's just uh, unbelievable. It's only been done a couple times in the National Hockey League. Talk about that five-goal game. Yeah, well, that was like my first three games in the NHL, I had eight goals, so I'm 
thinking, geez, this is not as hard as I thought it was, but it did get harder. Did, trust me. But the five goal game was my third game. I was on the road against the Minnesota North Stars, and uh, I didn't have any goals in the first period. But the second period, I got three, and I got. And I can remember I had four goals, and there was ten seconds left in the game. And uh, Phil Esposito, and I was on the bench. Phil Esposito came over to the bench, and John Ferguson was the coach. And he said, Fergie, put the kid out. The face-off's in that end. He says, let's see if we can get him five. So I'm, I'm, I, I jump over the boards, and the face-off is in the corner. And the same thing Phil Esposito said, look, and he says, if I lose the draw, don't move. I'll get it back. And he did lose the draw, and he got it back. And I think with about three seconds left, he, he slid it back to me, and I slapped in the corner, and that was for my fifth goal. Well, that's uh, quite an exciting game. <laughs> and right now, we'll take a look at some of the ice skaters' first professional goals right here with Ask the Gators. Ask the Gators, brought to you by the Medical Center of Southwest Louisiana and Women's and Children's Hospital. Uh, Piggy, why don't you tell us about your first professional goal? Wow, that's a long time ago, Andy. I can't even uh, think. I think it was, uh, well, it was obviously my first year professional over in Holland when I played over in Europe, and uh, I really don't remember it, Andy. <laughs> I bet your first uh, North American professional goal, do you remember that one? Um, that was in Erie, Pennsylvania. Actually, I was playing at home uh, against Dayton, and uh, I actually remember it. Uh, playing against Joey Middlestad, and uh, um, I remember him slashing me that night and uh, not feeling the whole right side of my body. Uh, but uh, it was a, you know, a lot of fun. Just uh, beat a guy wide to the outside, went in on the back end, I think, and uh, put it between the legs of Daryl Ray, who you would know uh, a radio broadcast announcer in the NHL right now. Sean, uh, this usually doesn't apply to goaltenders, but it does apply to you. Why don't you tell us about your first professional goal that you've actually scored? Well, I was, you know, I, I digged out three guys, you know, gave him a head fake, he fell for it, and did nothing but, you know, nothing but net. So, actually, it was pretty cool. I ended up uh, being the last guy to touch it. The guy shot it all down the end, and I got credit for the goal. So, so, usually that doesn't happen. I get out of the way. I'm supposed to stop it, but... I'll it all counts in the scorebook, though, right? It's a, it's a goal. Yeah, there we go. When I start to negotiate the following year, i got to make sure I get my points, so... I don't know, I scored so many that it's uh, hard to keep track here. I don't even know when I scored my first goal. No, uh, it was in uh, Muskegon, it was just a fluke goal. I took a shot from the point and uh, kind of trickled in after the goaltender kind of hacked, caught it. So that was my first uh, professional goal. But I was pretty excited anyway, Andy. I, uh, I think it was in Johnstown or somewhere on that road trip where I joined up. I couldn't even tell you it's, it was so long ago I scored, I can't remember. But it was a nice goal, I'm sure. Sure it was. Just like the, my second one the other night off my knee. I don't even remember the first goal, but I, think it, I remember it took a long time to get one. And I'm sure uh, you've scored a lot since then, so uh, it makes it a little more dif difficult to remember that first one. Yeah, I'll go with that if you want to. <laughs> Hugo, a lot of guys starting to pick up their first professional goal. As, uh, you've picked up your first professional goal this year up in PD earlier this season. Why don't you tell, uh, tell us about it and what you remember about your first pro goal? I'm really excited about it uh, in junior. It take me like 62 games to get my first uh, goal, and uh, in the pro just three. But uh, you know, that that can happen when uh, you shoot on a goal, and that's happened very fast uh, this year. And I know you like to call your goals in French. How do the French announcers say goal? Le but, le but is the goal. Hopefully, we'll see a lot more from you this year. Thanks again. I hope so. I think my first professional goal was last year in Fort Myers. Close my eyes like I did in the first one I got here. Let her fly at the net and found a way in. So that's about my first one. You start closing your eyes more often. I think so. I'm going to plant the blindfold on, I think, Friday. Uh, actually, it took me 19 games to try to get my first goal. I took a slap shot and got uh, got deflected by their defenseman. Went about 30 feet in the air and, and dropped in behind the goalie. So I, I'll always remember that goal. I'm sure. That, I'm surprised the story hasn't changed in since, since it was a blazing slap shot from inside the blue line, no? Well, no, it actually changed from about 10 feet in the air to 30 feet now. So, uh, no, it was it was a great goal, and uh, I think it was a game winner. Uh, my first goal happened uh, was in Fredericton. It was my second game. Uh, it was just kind of a fluke play. Uh, the guy dumped it in. Uh, we kind of ended up getting a two-on-one out of the play. I took a shot. Uh, puck went in the corner and went back to the D, and he just kind of shot it on net, but it went off the backboards. And I was standing on the other side of the net all by myself, and I just tapped it in with the backhand. So that was pretty much my first goal. It was kind of exciting, but I wish it happened with a you know top-shelf goal over the glove or something. But uh, you take, take it any way you can get it. Jesse, talking about a uh, player's first pro goals, why don't you take us back uh, to your first professional goal? Well, I clearly remember my first professional goal. Uh, I played one year in the American League, and I never uh, never scored. I ended up with eight points in the season, eight assists. So the next year I was, uh, you know, hoping to get that monkey off my back. I scored it in uh, Tallahassee against Tallahassee. 
And I think actually till to this day it's one of the only goals I still have footage of and it's probably still the nicest one I've ever scored. I think I picked it up in, in our end of the ice and managed to go through a few players and went and dicked out the goalie just like a just like in minor hockey when you're a kid, but I have to say I haven't scored one like that since and I don't know if I you know if I'll get a chance to do too many more. But I remember clearly yeah, and it was a good feeling and you know, I hope that there'd be more after that like that. Still have the puck saved somewhere? I have the puck uh, sent home. I think my parents got it stuffed away in some drawer somewhere. <laughs> Their looks are as powerful as the performance they deliver. They are Yukon and Suburban, GMC's full-size sport utilities for $19.99. The dominating size, the muscular stance, and the fine detailing of a luxurious interior. It'll make you feel like you have the power to go anywhere. Feel the power. Drive a Yukon or Suburban by GMC. Your GMC dealer now has special smart lease or smart buy payments on Yukon or Suburban. So what are you waiting for? See your Cajun Country GMC dealers today. I've been thinking lately. All things considered, I'm pretty special. I've had choices, made mistakes, but if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. I'll never be a size six again. I'm getting older, but these things aren't important. What is important are my needs, my health, and my children's health. These are things I'll never compromise. Your life, your needs, your hospital. Women's and Children's Hospital. There's over a million dollars waiting to be won at Players Island. Call now to receive your third clue. Your third clue to solving the eight-digit combination that'll crack our visible vault. Come and see the Great Pyramid of Cash right before your eyes. To take it home, you need to guess the code. And if you want a clue to the code, you need to phone the number below. The Million Dollar Visible Vault, only at Players Island Casino. Exit 29 on the I-10 in Lake Charles, Louisiana. <laughs> What you doing, Frank? Waiting for him to talk. <laughs> it's just a game. Frank. Well, some nights I'm in here, and I swear, I can hear him talking. We all have our demons, Frank. Shh, quiet. You're going to get us caught. Uh, Charlie? Yeah? You hear something? No. Now? No. As a business owner, you know that you can spend big dollars on printing. That's why it's important to make the right choice when it comes to choosing your printer. Someone with integrity, quality, service, and delivery is what it's all about. At Express Printing, we can take your ideas from inception to completion all under one roof. From color brochures and posters to letterheads and business forms, Express Printing can make your business stand out among the competition. For attention to details and quality, remember Express Printing and Forms. Welcome back to Chomp Time. Time now for our Rehab Excel training tips. And uh, Johnny Gomez has some more good stuff for us this week, Coach. And Johnny's been uh, just doing a great job. We've talked about him a lot, but uh, you know you know he likes to sleep a little bit now. And, uh, you give him a hard time about that, but he really does a good job for the ice skaters. Yeah, Johnny's unbelievable. I know if a lot of people don't know Johnny, he's probably about five foot seven or something, but he eats like he's six seven. It's unbelievable between his eating and sleeping. But no, he's a big part of this organization. He's the one that gets the players back, uh, tries to get them back early, keeps them healthy and stuff. Just a big, big part of the team. Well, let's take a look at what Johnny Gomez has this week in Rehab Excel training tips. Training tips brought to you by Rehab Excel. Hi, I'm Johnny Gomez and today on Rehab Excel's training tips I have Jan Davis with us. She's with uh, Comp Advantage. Comp Advantage. And we're the Occupational Health Department with Medical Center of Southwest Louisiana. And the topic we want to talk about today is flu. It's getting cold outside, and I know a lot of people are scared to miss work and trying to keep their kids healthy and everything. How can we help that? Well, as you said, tis the season with the, the change of weather, and a lot of people are concerned about uh, staying well and trying to miss as little work as possible. And with the flu season here, uh, we have been moving around the community to provide flu vaccines to those people that are interested in taking care of themselves. It's a known fact that if somebody were to get the flu, they will miss three to five days of work because of this. And the flu can be a very serious illness, which is why we're promoting for everybody to go ahead and take advantage of this health benefit. Right. What's the best way for somebody to kind of 
to get themselves a shot or where should they go? Well, a lot of the promotions begin uh, the middle of September. In fact, the time for flu vaccines is from the end of September through December. Uh, that comes from the Advisory Council on Immunizations. Now, the flu season is here upon us right now, and a lot of people think that they can't take the flu shot during the flu season, but they can actually get that through March. It's to their advantage to go ahead and get it as early as possible because it allows their body the time to build up the immunity so that they don't get the flu. Is it sure, a sure thing that if you get the flu shot, you won't get the flu? or? Uh, let me say that you will not get the flu from the flu shot. Uh, a long time ago, they used to actually put a live virus in the flu shot, and some people, I believe, actually did get the flu. But that is no longer. The, there is no live virus. It's a dead virus that's in the flu, but it helps your body build up the immunity that's necessary. Okay. Are there any type of risk or anything like that from the flu shot? And there's always going to be some risk associated, and it certainly varies from person to person. Anytime you have an injection, you may feel some tenderness or some swelling in that area, uh, maybe a little bit of fever, um, but that's that's something that goes along with, with taking a shot. Yeah, because uh, I know when I we kept getting them to the team, uh, some of the guys were concerned that they were going to get the flu. and. But you do tend to get some symptoms, but not really the flu, right? And that will vary from person to person, uh, and there are some people that will actually get sick, and we think that's strictly coincidental because it could be something that was already in their system and it is just surfacing at the time that the flu shot came about, and so naturally the first assumption is that, well, I got sick because of the flu shot. Okay. Well, thank you, Jan. I really thank appreciate Thank you, Johnny. It. Appreciate it. Oh, you hate to see that happen. Players in the NHL don't take that kind of abuse. Someone make him stop! So, you know, being an instructor with the Navy SEALs isn't all it's cracked up to be. You are getting desperate. No, I'm always like this. I really have no chance with you girls, do I? Be honest, I can take it. Yes, but we cannot! You all are like angels, I tell you. This guy is making me sick! Hey, you're not the only one. Oh, 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 oh! security in a whole new light. Beacon alarms, putting security in a whole new light. Fill with Falks, did you know that? Bed covers, Falks has fiberglass that comes in black or painted to match your factory color. Heavy-duty aluminum roll top or the no-drill clamp-on vinyl at the right price. Nerf bars in black, chrome, and stainless steel at a real good deal. Falks has hitches, tailgates, headache racks, bumpers, and a large selection of drill guards in chrome, black, and stainless steel. Go to Falks, go to Falks, go to our two locations. It's Fiesta time at Picante Mexican Restaurant and Cantina. Dine in an authentic Mexican atmosphere. Pollovenos, camarones, sudenos, enchiladas, burritos, sizzling fajitas, and more. Enjoy the daily lunch specials, appetizers, soups, salads, desserts, and el menu para los niños. Join your friends on the patio or sing until the donkeys come home with karaoke in the cantina. Picante Mexican Restaurant and Cantina. I-49 North at the Gloria Switch Exit. Goals of the Week, sponsored by Beacon Alarms. On the near point, John Spoltor setting up the Pontiac power play. To the fork, back to Spoltor, Nielsen's one time he scores! Power play goal for Corey Nielsen to make it 4-2 ice skaters. 
Now the face off, the ice skaters control. On the power play, Taves intercepts, can't clear. Corey Nielsen, good job to keep it in the zone. Sends one in front, a weird bounce. Shot on Sessity, scores! Okay, get a load of the old timer. That there is the legendary Radio Robert. Who? 20 years ago, he was unstoppable. Had a slap shot you could hear but could not see, hence the nickname Radio. Yeah, well, they can call him Rusty Robert now. Hey, Rusty! Don't, don't say it, Tony. Still got that shot, Tin Man? Let's see it. Oh. Punk. Hey, maybe you should be a gully, Tony. Tony? Their looks are as powerful as the performance they deliver. They are Yukon and Suburban, GMC's full-size sport utilities for $19.99. The dominating size, the muscular stance, and the fine detailing of a luxurious interior. It'll make you feel like you have the power to go anywhere. Feel the power. Drive a Yukon or Suburban by GMC. Your GMC dealer now has special smart lease or smart buy payments on Yukon or Suburban. So what are you waiting for? See your Cajun Country GMC dealers today. There's over a million dollars waiting to be won at Players Island. Call now to receive your third clue. Your third clue to solving the eight-digit combination that'll crack our visible vault. Come and see the Great Pyramid of Cash right before your eyes. To take it home, you need to guess the code. And if you want a clue to the code, you need to phone the number below. The Million Dollar Visible Vault, only at Players Island Casino. Exit 29 on the I-10 in Lake Charles, Louisiana. <laughs> Hey, boy, ain't it past your bedtime? No, Popo, it's not a cool night. Well, go inside and get some more popcorn. No, you go inside. No, you go. No, you go. You go. No, you go. No, you go. That's Avion, changing how Katie Anna watches TV forever. All the massive. It's still warm. I joined as well to be the special feelings free in South Louisiana today, where we say, The Bayou Boys from New Iberia are coming to Randall for a taping of Laissez Le Bon Temps Relay this Tuesday, December 7th. Music will commence and cameras will roll at 7 p.m., so come take part in this taping. It's this Tuesday, December 7th at 7 p.m. Don't miss it. We'll see you at Randall's. Welcome back to Chomp Time. Closing things out this week, Coach. Another great job. Another great week of hockey coming up on the way. A game uh, tomorrow night, Monday, against New Orleans Brass. And kids are off the next day, so it would be good to get some of the school kids out there and see the ice skaters take on the Brass tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're looking forward to especially New Orleans because we know that they're in our division and uh, we have that Hibernia Cup going. So teams like that, like New Orleans, Baton Rouge, that means there's a little extra to dig there for us. So we're going to be ready for the New Orleans. That game coming up tomorrow night, 7.05 at the Cajun Dome. And, Coach, that'll close it out this week. But I know you've got something special planned. A lot of folks have been on you to do this over the past couple weeks. <laughs> okay, this is for all you people that say I don't do this. Here's the chomp, okay? Now you've got it from the coach. All right, thanks. <laughs> Hopefully a lot of folks will be doing that tomorrow night. Coach, That's great right. job, and uh, we'll see you Sunday back here on Chomp Time. Okay, great. Thanks, Andy. We'll see all of you back here on Chomp Time. Chomp Time. What's brought to you by the Medical Center of Southwest Louisiana, Women's and Children's Hospital, Cajun Country GMC dealers, Bud Light, and off.